One size fits all. The singular phrase that induces an eye roll and heavy sigh for me faster than a clickbait article about free vintage patterns. While this phrase was first used in literature in 1902, it didn't gain real traction until after the Frank Zappa album by the same name was released in June of 1975. But while Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines the phrase as, quote, designed to conform to all shapes and sizes, the reality in clothing can be anything but. And while I could find no shortage of videos showing multiple people trying on one size clothing, I couldn't find a singular video based on making a piece and then having people try it on. So all this got me thinking, can I actually make a 1950s pattern and have it fit me? My lovely plus size body. So let's experiment now, shall we? So how we're gonna do this today is, am I gonna measure all the pattern pieces as I pull them out of the packet? No, of course not, that would be far too fun and easy. No, no, we're just gonna go ahead and cut it and make it. That's how we're gonna do this. And of course, to give the pattern a good fair shot. I am not throwing away my shot. We're gonna make sure that we do both views so that whether it's the wave wrap or the cobbler apron, we're gonna see exactly how or how not, well, this fits me. Wee! Because of the apron can't love me post cheesecake, it doesn't deserve me post salad. Please ignore this king size bed sheet because that didn't actually get used in this project. Then you have a very faded couch cover thing that I thrifted for $4 and my 1951 pattern, which after I opened it, I realized was still factory folded. Yeah, if I could stop finding patterns that are actually factory folded for these videos, that'd be great. But before I got started, I did have to take some measurements. So my bust measures a 46, my waist is currently a 41, and my hips are 47. This is all in inches, by the way. Cracking into the pattern, my main thought, after why do I always pick the factory folded one, was why in God's green creation are there so many pattern pieces for this apron? But now let's go ahead and go cut this thing out. And of course you can't start cutting anything out before you clean off all the crap off the floor first. Yes, I'm painting things. Exciting things are coming, but just not yet. Now here I am cutting out the apron that I uh, will not be sewing in this video, so just use your imagination that this is actually the blue floral. Did it work? No? Uh, I tried. Oh wait, here it is. But this is just me showing you how damaged it was prior to me hacking it to bits. And yes, dear viewership, I can proudly say that I managed to not turn my floor into a minefield by kicking over my pins this go around. Winning! Day two is here. And that is a proverbial day two because there is definitely a day off in between the cutting and the, well, now of now. So I am equipped in my appropriately named Gilmore Girl shirt, which I feel like exemplifies my entire existence. Both of these ready to cut out and vaguely marked correctly. There's a lot of lines on here that I don't really feel like doing all the tailor's tacks for. So we're gonna wing it. Let's be real. The whole point of this is to see if it actually fits me, not if all the nitty gritty details are correct. So we're just gonna go with it. Yay! Uh, the interesting thing that I discovered about this one, sorry for the crinkly, this crazy pattern thing that I picked up at Goodwill for $4. Yeah, it was half a duvet cover. So the reason why I was so confused when I first got it, because I thought, oh, this is a whole duvet cover. And then I was like, no, no, is this the couch cover? No, no, it was a half a duvet cover. But the upside was, is the thread was completely rotted. So pulling it into one piece was quite easy. And I do mean pull because it was so rotted, all I had to do was just rip the whole thing down. But thankfully the fabric doesn't feel dry rotted, it was just the thread. And I'm sure as soon as you saw this shot, you were very clear as to uh, the giant atrocity that has occurred behind me. And no, I can't actually close that door because it's it's propped open by stuff. So to be able to sew these things, I think I'm probably going to have to insert a cleaning montage right here. Does anyone else get deja vu when they clean up the same area over and over and over again? 
It's like, I don't remember throwing all this stuff here repeatedly. It must be the clutter demons. After failing at folding this piece uh, without any extra help along the bottom, I realized it was time to bust out one of my mini slide rules and heat stick. I, I mean, seam gauge and iron. Because I was supposed to fold along the bottom edge and then fold under a quarter on the top and make like a pocket situation. And I realized that pressing it into submission was the best way to do that. Once I had everything pressed down, I popped back over to the machine to sew it in place. Well, of course, the very first thing the instructions call for after me turning it and seaming it along the bottom is elastic. One quarter inch elastic, to be precise. Do I normally stock elastic in this house? No, 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 I do not. However, BAM! Mask elastic rat leftovers. So, I guess we're okay for now. Maybe one day I should actually look and see all the things that I need before I actually start a project. Now, was I nervous to cut into the once priceless commodity that is elastic? N no, no, I'm not, because it's not April of 2020 anymore, and we once again have the elastic to bounce. That was a stretch, I know. So after cutting off 11 inches times two, I assaulted it with my uh, safety pin and wiggled it through the channel that I just made. I then attached both ends at the seam line on their appropriate sides. Next up, I did the same faux rolled hem for the back edge and sewed it into place. And because I didn't have the time and energy to do all the tailor tack for the pockets, I took the lazy way. I laid my pattern piece on each side of the front and made little dots with my friction pin through because each pocket was slightly different. And then I traced out where my pockets will eventually go. And yes, disappearing ink pens make the best invisible pockets. 10 out of 10 would recommend if you don't want your pocket to hold anything but air. But you do have to be careful if that heat stick gets a little too close to your invisible pocket, it will make them truly invisible and no, no, really, it'll make all your lines disappear, so be careful. With my invisible pockets installed, I moved on to actually making this into a real garment by starting at the shoulder seam. With the shoulders attached, the instructions wouldn't let me uh, leave them as is, like I am ought to do in all of my garments. It made me fold over the excess and stitch it down on both sides. Uh, for every single seam. While that made sewing the whole thing take a lot longer than I had initially planned for, I will say it does feel structurally stronger, so I guess that is a win. But I, I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of this. But hey, at least I gave it the good old 1951 try. Another odd instruction that I hadn't come across before was being told to stitch the sleeve in before the side seams. It was very fiddly to get it to stay pinned correctly, but I did manage to convince it with my strong tone and persuasive words. I, I mean pins, lots and lots of pins. Now because the sleeve also called for that lovely double stitch edge, I busted out my ham. The tailoring kind, not the Christmas kind. It helped me to iron the seams into the desired fashion. I'd also clip the curves to help it do my bidding. This feels right. Everyone holds the curvy bits of the sewing project with their uh, chin, right? No, just me? Okay, great. after stitching the side seam closed from the waist to the sleeve end. Of course, while watching some of my favorite sewing vlogs like Costuming Drama and Closet Historian, I stitched the side seams all the way up with that weird rolled thing situation. Uh, and I actually had to go all the way down to the very bottom of the front piece and stitch that 
all the way up to the double end of the sleeve. Again, a little odd, but it did work. Uh, remembering that you brought the heat stick a little too close to your invisible pocket, you flip your piece and check, and to your utter horror, you realize you have dissolved all of your hard work in one corner. So after a few deep breaths, you realize that all is not lost, and you just retrace your amazing faux pocket. But before you can do any further damage to your lovely project, you call it a night. All I have to say is this neckband is demonic. Like, Spawn of Satan, 7th level of hell, demonic. Do not cut this on the straight of grain. It was painful to get into place. Uh, almost more painful than trying to get my child to sit still long enough for me to braid her hair before school. When we're running behind, and it's raining. So I would advise, actually, in this place, maybe adjust this to being cut on the bias in two pieces, stitch the center, that way you can at least vaguely get it to wrap the way it's supposed to. Now I say that and I don't know what that would actually look like, but I figure it's gotta be better than trying to fiddle this thing into place. But did I go back and do that? Oh, no, 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 no. I was far too lazy in trying to push forward and running behind on time, so we moved on. By this time, I could feel the completion, the finish, the done. The ties, I thought. The ties are all that I have left to do, which you will see in a moment is wholly incorrect. But that's neither here nor there at this moment. So, of course, I whipped them up as fast as I possibly could. Just iron and sew. That's right, I was a rebel. No pins in sight. But when making a tube of fabric that looks basically like a giant piece of fettuccine, it really isn't too rebellious. In this moment, I realized why my mother kept those knitting needles around even though she did not knit. It was to turn fabric tubes, obviously. But as I don't have any of those lying around, I use the next best thing. A, a pin with a cap on it. Okay, it wasn't great, but I made it work. Uh, yeah. And then I pressed it, and I stitched the end of each fettuccine tube closed. Now I took each of my pieces of fettuccine and attached it at the back center of the elastic point, down at the bottom for the tie situations, and then one through that terrible neckband thing. I'm done, right? No, 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 I'm not. I definitely forgot the, uh, whole part about turning the end of the sleeve and feeding in elastic so that I actually have something that isn't just completely unfinished on my garment. So I went ahead and did that, closed it, and shut it. And then while I was hand stitching, I popped downstairs to hang out with my significant other and small fluffy white thing whilst hand sewing, which only went so well because the white thing really wanted attention. But of course we did it while watching The Mandalorian Season 1. Don't come at me. I, 2020 was a rough year and I just, I just couldn't. So here we are in 2021 catching up. So I am now fully through Mandalorian season one and now ready for season two with my brand new giant child plush that I found at Costco literally the other day and I squealed in the middle of the store. Before I put it on, I am concerned that this is not going to fit the way it's supposed to. I think it might work, but we're gonna find out. So I am wearing my 1950s style trashy diva dress. So it's got a gathered skirt, not a whole lot of fluff because I didn't feel like putting on an apron. No, it's not a house dress, but here we are. So uh, I'm gonna stop stalling and put on the daggone thing. <laughs> All right, well, covers most of the skirt. That's good. That's the whole point of aprons. All right, pockets would be there because I still haven't done that. No. Back ties. And bam! Ooh, hey, look at that. All right. I mean, it's supposed to tie in the back, but let's be real. 
That's not happening. So uh, we tie it in the front and that's fine. Shockingly, oh God, I made this elastic way too big. I measured my bicep here thinking that it would be like the poof sleeve. Nope, I should have measured at the elbow because now I have literal ages. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Okay, if we're being technical here, it does fit. Does it fit well? No, 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 it does not. Believe it or not though, I can lift my arms. That's good, because I was afraid these sleeves were going to be very constricted. I still have a couple inches down here, so there's definitely room to go up. Although, if I were any larger uh, at the waist, um, this would not touch half and half. So you would have to add width through here if you're any larger than my measurements. And I personally would wish this was a little longer just to cover more of the skirt situation. So if I were cooking, it would be a little better. This feels like a very tiny boa constrictor is around my neck, but that's probably my problem for tying it too tight. And just to really get a full rounding out of this, my dear friend Liz Von Villis from her channel, Liz Von Villis, you know, we're really clever. We name them after ourselves. It's so it's easier to find, don't come at me. I decided to ask her for her help. She is actually gonna do a side for side here. She's also very kindly agreed to share her measurements and how this fits on her. So we're gonna do a little side by side so you can see how it fits on me versus how it fits on her. So while I take this thing off, I want to say thank you again to my dear friend Liz for agreeing to do that with me and doing the lovely socially distanced version. Oh good! Okay, and... So, <laughs> final thoughts. While it is not impossible to find a one-size-fits-all garment, let's be real. It's an apron. It's sort of already one size fits all. The reason I did this was because with the sleeves and the way the rat back and the ties were designed, I was really intrigued to see exactly how it would fit. And I wasn't sure about the neck and how much room there'd be up there. And to be fair, while I complained about the neckline, that was also my fault for tying it a little too tight. Do I think it's the most flattering thing in the one size fits all category? No, 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 not even a little. Because well, one size fits all also known as one size fits none. The whole point of these garments is to kind of envelop a whole range of people. And in modern times, it's normally done by highly stretchy material. And well, that was not, that was cotton. So it was more a, let's make this blanket-esque thing with some vague billow sleeves and slap it on however many people fit. Of course, I don't think it looks quite as lovely in person as it does in the drawing because well, drawings can make light of things and enhance things beyond what they are in reality. Internet, I'm looking at you. But overall, I do think my lovely little experiment was a success because I was in fact able to put it on, move my arms around and not feel completely like a boa constrictor had wrapped around my neck. If you enjoyed this content today where I experiment on things and then bring it to you, make sure you comment down below so that way I know you enjoyed this because I would like to bring more content like this to you. However, I just need to know it's actually what you guys want to see and not just me tearing apart reproduction patterns all the time. And if you enjoyed my lovely adventure sewing this lovely little piece, go ahead and click the like button and feel free to click subscribe because yes, more sewing is coming whether you like it or not. It just depends on whether it's experimentational or just regular things I want to make for myself. Thank you all so much for watching and I do sincerely hope I'll see you next time. And there went sunlight. Cute. Take three. Hopefully this one will be good. Because of the apron can't have me... No. Because of the apron can't... Oh, hair. Because of the apron can't love me post salad, it doesn't deserve me post cheesecake. No, it's the other way around. And as of, of course, I'm sure you've noticed as the minute this... And of course, I'm sure you noticed the minute this whole video popped up. Damn it. Actually. You just like saying that. I do like saying that.
So let's grab our coffees. Yes, I did get a brand new Tower of Terror mug that has the cute little like heat the thingies, words, I don't know. What do you call these designs? The heat reveal designs, those.